सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट करिकुलम बेस्ड सीरीज ध्वनि शाला सो लेट्स ज्वाइन इन ध्वनि शाला क्लास सेवन नमस्ते एंड हेलो टू माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर निधि सिंह एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट क्लास सेवन जोग्राफी टेक्स्ट बुक चैप्टर वन दैट इज एनवायरमेंट Let us start today's talk with a simple activity. Look around yourself. What do you see? You can see your room, bed, table, chair, your family members, friends, or maybe the trees and plants outside your house, road, cycle, cars, cow, and dog, etc. All these make our environment. So, what do you think an environment is? The place, people, things, and nature that surround any living organism is called as environment. It is a combination of natural and human-made phenomena. It is derived from the French word "environner," meaning neighborhood environment is our basic life support system it provides the air we breathe the water we drink the food we eat and the land where we live the naturally occurring environment makes the natural environment whereas the human made things make the man made or human made environment human beings are also capable of modifying the environment how do human beings modify this natural environment the cars or other vehicles emit gases in the air and pollute water is collected in a pot food is served in vessels and land is used to build factories we even have air conditioners and they change the immediate environment of our room or office or car etc this is how human beings modify natural environment depending on this we have three basic components of environment that are first natural which includes air water land and living things etc second is man made which includes buildings parks roads etc third one is human which has individual family and community etc in it while the natural environment refers to both biotic and abiotic conditions existing on the earth human environment reveals the activities creations and interactions among human beings first of all we will be discussing about the natural environment land water air plants and animals comprise the natural environment You must have read about lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere in your previous class and by now you must have got familiar with these terms. Let us revisit them one by one. Lithosphere is the solid crust or the hard top layer of the earth. It is made up of rocks and minerals and covered by a thin layer of soil it is an irregular surface with various landforms such as mountains plateaus plains valleys etc do you know landforms are found not just over the continents but also on the ocean floors lithosphere is the domain 
or realm of environment that provides us forests grasslands for grazing land for agriculture and human settlements we also get mineral from land only the domain of water is referred to as hydrosphere it consists of various sources of water and different types of water bodies like rivers lakes seas oceans etc it is essential for all living organisms try making a list of all the water bodies located around you in your locality can you think of the third domain or realm of environment think over it is the atmosphere the atmosphere is the thin layer of air that surrounds the earth can you tell me what is that which holds the air and gases in the atmosphere around the earth the gravitational force of the earth holds the atmosphere around it it protects us from the harmful rays and scorching heat of the sun it consists of a number of gases dust and water vapor the changes in the atmosphere produce changes in the weather and climate plant and animal kingdom together make biosphere or the living world it is a narrow zone of the earth where land water and air interact with each other to support life we all know that india has different types of landforms right it has desert coastal plains mountains etc have you visit any such place other than where you live what do you observe the climate trees animals etc all are little different from one place to another isn't it it is cooler in mountains the trees are taller animals have long hairs on them and likewise whereas in desert area shorter trees with small and spiky leaves are present animal like camel can be seen and it is hotter at such places there are different ecosystems the second type of environment other than natural environment is the human environment human beings interact with the environment and modify it according to their need early human adapted themselves to the natural surroundings they were highly dependent on the nature for their survival they led a simple life and fulfilled their requirements from the nature around them as time passed by needs grew and became more varied humans learned new ways to use and change their surroundings or environment they learned to grow crops domesticate animals and led a settled life a different way of leading life started the wheel was invented surplus food was produced barter system emerged trade started and commerce developed do you know what a barter system is it is a system of exchange of goods and services or a way of trade where 
money is not used then how does one trades or buys things one buys things by giving a thing in return and not money or currency of any kind for example suppose i want to buy a cow so i will not pay money to the seller rather i will pay in terms of any good say for example five gunny bags full of rice even today this barter system is followed at some places ask your parents they must have been knowing some people coming to houses and selling utensils and other things in exchange of old clothes i myself have seen such people traveling from door to door and selling steel utensils by taking old clothes in exchange then industrial revolution took place this enabled large scale production new means of transportation came up and these made transportation faster decades later information revolution took place and this made communication easier and speedy across the world talk to your grandparents and try to find out how they used to travel during their younger days how many places they traveled and through what means how much time it took to travel from one place to another also discuss with them how many days it took to communicate a message to others now compare their experiences with yours what do you find if you want to communicate a message to someone you can just do that in a fraction of seconds through a text message or sms phone call or an email similarly you can travel to even far off places or thousands of kilometers in few hours through an aeroplane isn't it have you ever thought why you love eating a juicy watermelon in summer and hot roasted peanuts in winter think over it similarly why do we have soup warm milk sometimes with turmeric and ghee in it tea and coffee in winter season while we like to have curd lassi buttermilk and even ice cream during summer season we also wear different types of clothes in different seasons isn't it tell me what do you prefer to wear during summer season do you wear woolen clothes or light cotton clothes exactly we all prefer wearing light cotton clothes during summer season since we feel very cold during winter season we prefer wearing woolen or warm clothes a perfect balance is necessary between the natural and human environment humans must learn to live and use their environment in a harmonious way trying to change lots of things may lead to disturbing the balance of nature you might have heard in the news or seen in the newspapers that as human beings have changed the natural environment problems have appeared and is again harming the human beings take an example of use of water human beings 
polluted the water of ponds lakes rivers etc and ultimately that water was put in the fields to grow crops and the crops got rotten or got contaminated when these crops were eaten by animals and human beings they fell sick this is how the cycle of things go on in the environment since all the components are interrelated with each other if one is adversely affected the other also gets affected now let us do an exercise make a list of things we eat during summer season and in winter season try to find out why do we consume these things in respective seasons you can discuss with your parents i will tell you an excerpt from the newspaper the indian express published on 3rd august 2020 English version New Delhi edition the title of the article was high levels of ammonia in yamuna water the cause effect and possible solution now listen to this for the second time in a week the delhi jal board or the djb on monday had to reduce water production capacity by 25% after high levels of ammonia were detected in the yamuna river raghav chadda the vice chairman of the djb said the concentration of pollutants was high in raw water released from haryana due to which supply was affected in parts of the city the situation was brought under control later in the day the level of ammonia in raw water on monday morning was 1.8 parts per million or ppm this was significantly less than 3 ppm recorded on friday the acceptable maximum limit of ammonia in drinking water as per the bureau of indian standards is 0.5 ppm the djb presently has the capacity to treat approximately 0.9 ppm what is ammonia and what are its effects ammonia is a colorless gas and is used as an industrial chemical in the production of fertilizers plastics synthetic fibers dyes and other products ammonia occurs naturally in the environment from the breakdown of organic waste matter and may also find its way to ground and surface water sources through industrial effluents or through contamination by sewage if the concentration of ammonia in water is above 1 ppm it is toxic to fishes in humans long term ingestion of water having ammonia levels of 1 ppm or above may cause damage to internal organs how does it enter the yamuna the most likely source is believed to be the effluents from dye units distilleries and other factories in panipat and soni pat districts in haryana and also sewage from some unsevered colonies in this stretch of the river water used from the yamuna for supply to the city is taken before the wazirabad barrage officials of the delhi pollution control committee that is dp 
सी सी क्लेम डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्रीज इन डेली बिगिन्स आफ्टर दिस पॉइंट वॉट इज द लॉन्ग टर्म सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम स्ट्रिंजेंट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ गाइडलाइंस अगेंस्ट डंपिंग हार्मफुल वेस्ट इन टू द वॉटर एंड मेकिंग श्योर अनट्रीटेड सीवेज डज नॉट एंटर द वॉटर आर टू थिंग्स पॉल्यूशन कंट्रोल बॉडीज आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू डू हाउएवर नीदर हरियाणा नॉर डेली have been able to ensure the same but a more organic method agreed upon by environmentalists and experts is to maintain a sustainable minimum flow called the ecological flow this is the minimum amount of water that should flow throughout the river at all times to sustain underwater and estuarine ecosystems of human livelihoods and for self regulation the lack of a minimum ecological flow also means accumulation of other pollutants after water is extracted from the river for treatment in north east delhi what flows is mostly untreated sewage and refuses from homes run off from storm water drains and effluents from unregulated industry by this news excerpt you must have understood how human beings are influencing the natural environment in an adverse way therefore there is a need for increased awareness and proper regulation on various activities at every level that is at individual family community and larger levels today we got to know about the following things first what is environment second natural and human environment third components of environment fourth relationship between biotic and abiotic components of environment fifth is what is an ecosystem Sixth is different types of ecosystem, and seventh is how human beings started influencing the natural environment. Now let us gear up for some brainstorming session of questions and answers. Question number one: Choose the correct answer from the given options. first is which is not a natural ecosystem a desert b aquarium c forest yes it is b aquarium second question which is not a component of human environment a land b religion and c community can you answer yes it's a land land is not a component of human environment but of natural environment third is Which is a human made environment? A mountain B C and C road. Yes, it's C road. Road is a human made environment. 
Next question is, which is a threat to environment? A. Growing plant B. Growing population and C. Growing crops Can you choose the correct answer? Yes, it is B. Growing population Why so? Because with growing population, the need for exploitation of resources increases and we are extracting more and more things from the environment which disturbs the balance between the natural and the human environment. Question number 2 Give reasons for the following First is Man modifies his environment. Here by man, we mean man as well as woman. So, human. How human modifies his environment? Second is, plants and animals depend on each other. Hope you must have understood the meaning and nature of environment. You must have also understood the relationship between human environment. This was all about the environment existing above the earth's surface. In the next chapter, we will talk about the environment that exists within the earth. Till then, bye and take care. So friends, you were just listening to the series Dhwani Shala. Production assistants Minakshi Kukreti and Tanu Gupta. Recorded by Shanu Muksim and Vikas Sangwan. Produced by Vandana Arimardan. This program is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India.